Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Shir, and I am the CTO of DeepChex. Personally, in my years in the field, I've seen and taken part in lots of machine learning projects throughout their life cycle, which also means that I've seen quite a few problems that ML models face. And for me, that really clarified the need for proper machine learning validation, and was also one of the building blocks for the founding of DeepChex. So given the forum we have here, I assume there is no need to elaborate about the contribution of machine learning to a wide variety of fields, and probably also not uh, too much need to talk about the challenge in making sure that these models function properly. So I'd like us to focus and move from the general idea of machine learning validation to the specific topic of offline model validation, which means validating it before you actually deployed it. One of the reasons we're very keen on this topic and, and we, um, we've put some effort into it is that during our time in deep checks and our experience, we saw that various issues that we found when monitoring um, machine learning models in production are actually problems that could have been detected before and uh, prevented or mitigated. And since helping machine learning models uh, work better and enable their wider adoption is something that we're very passionate about, I'm um, even more excited to talk about this topic now as we have really recently released an open source package implementing tools exactly for that purpose. So while it is true that if we don't test um, cases, then we won't detect any cases, it is also true that if we do detect them in advance or as early as possible, we'll be able to prevent them and also to develop models with less bugs and uh, less surprises and enable them to be more trustworthy and perform better. But well, all this isn't new, right? Like the idea of testing and finding bugs is something that we can have a look at our neighbor world at classic software and maybe try using their ideas and methodologies. But machine learning is quite different. And how is that? Well, first of all, in many ways, um, one of them being that that regular like um, classic code or algorithmic code, you can kind of trace and um, go through and if something failed in a specific point or or something like weird happened, it will probably be much easier to actually understand in uh, like what happened because generally it's a uh, in a human readable format and you can see the path that um, like the code went to. But what happens in machine learning is that we do have code, but what it does is translate some data and mathematical functions to a kind of bunch of scrambling of numbers and doing different mathematical optimizations and resulting eventually with more numbers. So the result of this code is um, uh, a path that is very hard to trace through and understand like what happened and why did it happen and how can I change or prevent this? Um, which um, bring us to look like, let's look a bit wider. What are the specific challenges of, of machine learning and, um, and trying to test it? So while in the area of code, we have like the ability to kind of try to cover and go through all the branches and which give us, gives us an interesting indication of like, did we actually test different scenarios? So in machine learning, how would or can we do that? Should we go over the like input uh, space, like all the, all the possible uh, input features, but well, that's not really possible, right? In a high, a very high dimensional spaces, and like, what, what even is, what are the legal or like valid in the domain inputs? Or maybe we should try cover the model, but what does that mean? Like, go through all the activations of the different neurons in a neural network, or go through the branches of a tree? It's also not really clear and not very clear how and why and if it will help us or how can we implement it. Another thing is silent failures. Um, code like machine learning gets numbers as input and outputs a number. So what if something really weird happened to these input numbers along the way? The model won't have common sense to say, hey, something weird happened here. This like isn't supposed to be all zeros. It will just take the number, plug it in, and have a result. So like things that are um, like completely, even for the human eye, like really weird inputs will can are likely to go undetected and just receive an output number. And more than that, also, when we try to actually evaluate the performance, many times we'll have the labels coming in only um, later, or sometimes not even at all. So when we actually understand that something weird or problematic happened and the performance is degrading, it might be um, 
after a long time of, of uh, silent failures. And well, the word of machine of like data keeps changing. So uh, the data is um, kind of chaotic and we don't necessarily know like if uh, input is, is valid or not. And uh, for example, we do also things like retraining and then, okay, so what, what how should it behave now? So it, all these together bring a very big challenge and validating the problems. And the result is that many problems are likely to remain undetected. So which brings us to the question of what should we validate? Um, so let's look at um, the typical types of issues in machine learning related problems. So we have things that to have to do with the data integrity, because obviously if um, the model is based on the data and the data um, isn't correct, then that is a central problem, garbage in, garbage out. Um, things that have to do with the distribution. So for example, if you have various data sets and like, they um, behave completely different, then is one, for example, relevant to evaluate the other or how will it behave if, if the data completely changed, like, if it's valid, but the distribution changed. Things that have to do with the methodology of, of uh, training. So it can be the way we collected the data or the way we split it or the way we built the model, um, different things of the actual process of building the models. Things that have to do with the performance. So is the model calibrated? Like does the way my prediction um, uh, translate to like real life value? Is it according to my targets? Um, do I perform properly in different segments? And maybe I have specific areas of weird performance and how, how does my performance in general behave and over time? And also things that have to do with fairness that are relevant in some of the use cases. For example, does my model treat differently, um, different samples from with different demographical um, features if, if, um, if it should and uh, like if these exist. And also, are there any maybe features that I don't know, but also have an effect of, of such sort of um, giving like unfair or not uh, unequal um, uh, predictions to, to different groups? So if I look at all of these together, it may be a bit overwhelming, actually. And there are many more that aren't really um, like explicitly stated here. But um, Yes, so it is a big challenge. And in order not to discourage you too much, um, we'll go over a few examples and, and show how these can be really um, like logically tested or checked. So I'll go over quickly a few of the examples. So we can have like um, things that have to do with uh, the integrity. So do similar samples have different labels? And if so, should, is that a problem? Like it may be and it may be not, but this is something that's interesting to check. Um, did we, do we have the same kind of samples in the training data and then in the test data? And if so, then um, maybe there's a potential leakage and the, my evaluation isn't correct. Do the do two different data sets um, behave similarly or can they be detected because there's a specific drift um, between them? Is there some feature or features that uh, contribute very highly to the, to the target, to the label, or maybe, maybe contribute in a very different way between the train and the test. So both of these can be indicators of different types of, of leakage that I um, don't want to have, because um, it does mean that maybe my, my data or problem doesn't represent um, reality the way I think it, it does or it should. And also things that have to do with the evaluation, like, um, Let's look at the performance in different areas and find if there are specific areas in which the model is suddenly completely out. So we saw different types of like um, how these things can be evaluated and what can be checked, but when should it be done? So if we look at a kind of standard machine learning um, pipeline, we have starting from the data, pre-processing, training, evaluation, and then the production related like deployment and production. But we're talking about offline, so we'll leave for now the deployment production and all the monitoring in that area aside and focus on the actual process of the data scientist or the machine learning practitioner. Um, we, won't, we won't open our uh, debate about the different terms. So um, we have, first of all, we start with the raw data. Um, and there we can already validate it and check its integrity, check if we have some weird things in the, in the different features or in labels and the things that are related to that. Then when we want to start training, we can check 
are we working correctly? Like, is, did we work properly with the splits? Um, are there weird things that have to do with the distribution? Um, are we, do we think that the model we're going to train is it representative in the way it should? And well, of course the model itself, like when we have a ready model, then we wanna evaluate its results in different manners and try to see if there are some things that we can um, detect and uh, potential, um, potential problems or maybe even just improve the model. So um, you can see uh, all these and more in our GitHub package, but we will now do a kind of walkthrough of a, of a use case and see the, how these uh, different types of, um, of checks and the timings interact together. So we'll talk about a use case of classifying um, malicious URLs. Uh, so we have a data set built of, of various features from um, uh, URLs that the, the target is to classify whether they are related, they are phishing URLs or, uh, or um, they're, they're uh, valid URLs, like non-phishing ones, benign. Um, and once we have the data set, we can check how it behaves, like, is there anything weird? And in this case, if we run it on the data set, we'll see that there are a few columns that have um, only one unique value in the field, like a constant value for all of the column. So obviously this is something that doesn't contribute to my model. And moreover, this is something that maybe if I had like a previous data set and this problem didn't appear, then I should be suspicious because maybe something changed or, or maybe like, maybe this is a feature that is supposed to to like help my model, but for example, now something um, like it, it stopped uh, arriving, for example. In this case, since it's a new data, a new data set, and we just have some constant values, then we'll just um, drop out these, uh, these columns. And moving on to training the model. So right before we train, we wanna split, right? We wanna be able to evaluate our model on a, on a new data set that, um, that the model didn't see. And well, we wanna split also before the pre-processing. Um, but uh, anyway, now before we train, we have a pre-processed and split data set. So we wanna validate um, our split. And in this case, we run many checks that are relevant for that phase from the different uh, types of checks that we saw before, like the logical ones. And in this case, we see that there's some type of leakage. Um, probably there was a certain mistake when uh, splitting the data set. And there was some uh, data in the, in the test data that is, actually earlier than some of the dates in the training data. So like the training is kind of peaking into the future, um, possibly also, um, also giving us some like uh, um, unclear, like it can use the data from the future to like uh, improve the model. And then obviously the model's validity and, and the, its performance on the test set um, isn't necessarily the one that it will be in the real life. So yeah, obviously, um, data leakage is problematic and we would want to resplit the data in order to overcome that. And if we look at the results themselves, like we trained the model and now we want to evaluate it and we can consider different things that have to do with its performance. So for example, is it um, uh, performing worse on the, like much worse on the test than on the train or is the specific class or in general, like is, it, uh, is the performance below a certain threshold for some of the metrics? So this is something that is probably quite popular to, to look at, like different performance metrics, but here we can also look at it in different um, um, aspects and over time. And also um, other things, for example, is there a specific feature that is indicative for higher error in the model? And maybe it can indicate some type of problem or enable us to improve the, the model or, or um, work with that feature better. So, um, summarizing a bit the different uh, topics we talked about. So we talked about offline validation. Um, not only don't panic uh, all the other way around, be happy that you have the opportunity to validate your model offline. We said that it's very different from um, software testing and therefore we have different uh, tools and ideas. One of them is that we have to check the data, the model, and also the relation between them and do so throughout the machine learning development lifecycle. And it can be done in a methodological manner, which will obviously um, help us and uh, be more, more, more um, like check more cases and also in a more efficient manner. And well, the benefits of it, um, we can find critical mistakes. It improves the trustworthiness of our model, helps improve our performance, and also saves us time because we can find problems that may have 
we may detect only later on. And also once we have it like um, in, a, in a convenient manner, we can also reuse and run like the same code and tools and like the checks that we saw and uh, have all this covered. So in deep checks, we have both the offline validation part, by the way, currently it's only tabular, but we're going to uh, later on um, release also computer vision and NLP related um, checks and a production monitoring um, system, which isn't in the, uh, which is DeepChecks Pro, not in, as part of the open source. And um, that's it. So I want to thank you for listening. Um, and I invite you to, to listen, to, to uh, go and read more and would be happy to, to hear your thoughts and insights. Thank you very much.